We continue today with chapter 30, Freedom of Will. Do you not understand that to oppose the Holy Spirit is to fight yourself? He tells you, but your will, he speaks for you, and his divinity is but your own, and all he knows is but your knowledge, save for you, that you may do your will through him. God asks you do your will. He joins with you. He did not set his kingdom up alone. In heaven itself but represents your will, where everything created is for you. No spark of life but was created with your glad consent, as you would have it be. And not one thought that God has ever had but waited for your blessing to be born. God is no enemy to you. He asks no more that he hear you call him friend. How wonderful it is to do your will, for that is freedom. There is nothing else that ever should be called by freedom's name. Unless you do your will, you are not free. And would God leave his son without what he has chosen for himself? God but ensured that you would never lose your will when he gave you his perfect answer. Hear it now, that you may be reminded of his love, and learn your will. God would not have his son made prisoner to what he does not want. He joins with you in willing you be free, and to oppose him is to make a choice against yourself, and choose that you be bound. Look once again upon your enemy, the one you chose to hate instead of love. For thus was hatred born into the world, and thus the rule of fear established there. Now hear God speak to you through him who is his voice and yours as well, reminding you that it is not your will to hate and be a prisoner to fear, a slave to death, a little creature with a little life. Your will is boundless. It is not your will that it be bound. What lies in you has joined with God himself in all creation's birth. Remember him who has created you, and through your will created everything. Not one created thing but gives you thanks, for it is by your will that it was born. No light of heaven shines except for you, for it was set in heaven by your will. What cause have you for anger in a world that merely waits your blessing to be free? If you be prisoner, then God himself could not be free. For what is done to him whom God so loves is done to God himself. Think not he wills to bind you who has made you co-creator of the universe along with him. He would but keep your will forever and forever limitless. The world awaits the freedom you will give when you have recognized that you are free. But you will not forgive the world until you have forgiven him who gave your will to you. For it is by your will the world is given freedom. Nor can you be free apart from him whose holy will you share. God turns to you to ask the world be saved, for by your own salvation is it healed. And no one walks upon the earth, but must depend on your decision, that he learn death has no power over him, because he shares your freedom as he shares your will. It is your will to heal him. And because you have decided with him, he is healed. And now is God forgiven, for you chose to look upon your brother as a friend. And from the workbook, Lesson 235, God in his mercy wills that I be saved. I need but look upon all things that seem to hurt me, and with perfect certainty assured myself 
God wills that I be saved from this and merely watch them disappear. I need but keep in my mind my Father's will for me is only happiness, to find that only happiness has come to me. And I need but remember that God's love surrounds His Son and keeps His sinlessness forever perfect, to be sure that I am saved and safe forever in His arms. I am the Son He loves, and I am saved because God in His mercy wills it so. Father, your holiness is mine. Your love created me and made my sinlessness forever part of you. I have no guilt nor sin in me, for there is none in you. Amen.